Hi, I'm Coach Bobby. I'm an ex-esports coach, and I've been dealing with depression since I was a teenager. Uh, so I first started combating my depression and actually getting a handle on it in my early 20s uh, when my girlfriend sent me an article called The Seven Neurochemicals of Happiness. Uh, we're not going to focus on all the neurochemicals today, just dopamine and serotonin, and I'll be teaching you guys how to hack your depression. Uh, and that's just strategies that I found to help deal with my depression in ways uh, that I can elicit dopamine and serotonin production uh, within my brain to make myself feel better. So first I'm going to do a brief overview of the neurochemicals and then I'm going to give you guys strategies on how to produce them. First is dopamine. Uh, it is the reward molecule for humans and it drives most human behavior. Uh, you know, if you want to eat, if you want to have sex, if you want to go outside and play with your friends, uh, that's all pretty much dopamine that is responsible for pushing you and motivating you to go out. Because uh, you know that if I go out and do this thing or, you know, stay in, if I open up a game of League of Legends, uh, that I am going to feel excited and fun. And I'm going to get that dopamine hit when something good happens. So there is high quality dopamine feedback loops and low quality dopamine feedback loops. Uh, and the issue with relying on things that are low quality dopamine feedback loops, and I believe that these things are like social media, uh, you know, just like watching YouTube for four hours a day, uh, you know, going and playing on a slot machine, or, you know, it's fine to play video games, you know, it's fine to get dopamine from video games. Video games are very rewarding. They're very fun. They can be very social. But the issue is when you're only getting dopamine from video games uh, and you don't have other uh, quality dopamine feedback cycles. So I think we've all seen the video of old people, or maybe you've seen it before at a casino, you know, just sitting on the slot machine, pressing the button over and over and over again to roll. Uh, and that's because they are in a dopamine feedback cycle and a low quality one. Uh, and studies have shown that human beings are willing to, you know, hurt themselves or, you know, work themselves into a depression uh, because of a low quality dopamine feedback cycle. Because you're getting just enough dopamine to keep going, right? Even though it, it's detrimental to your bank account, you're, you're getting that constant little feed every once in a while you win and it's enough to make you want to keep going it's the same same thing with social media right you're just scrolling 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 eventually you go haha i think you're scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and that's what i would call a low quality dopamine feedback cycle and uh also like illicit drugs like you know weed or cocaine i'm not saying like you know i'm not policing your behavior or anything like that but, you know, if you do have depression, you should understand how illicit drugs are impacting your depression. Uh, so, you know, when you smoke weed, uh, you have this uh, physio this super physiological hit of dopamine. You know, you have like an all time high of dopamine. Uh, and every time you smoke weed, you know, you are getting close to that all time high, but you're not quite meeting it again uh so that's where like the the dopamine the the peak has been set and the issue with the peak being up there from illicit drugs is that the baseline also raises so things like going outside and gain sunlight is no longer hitting that peak or even within that established baseline of dopamine anymore so if you are relying on illicit drugs in order to you know feel okay, then you're kind of shooting your dopamine uh, feedback cycle. Uh, so what are examples of high quality dopamine feedback loops? Well, saying I'm going to go outside and I'm going to get sunlight today, then going outside and gain sunlight today. Uh, or, you know, same thing with exercise or cooking for yourself. Or it can be as simple as, you know, I'm going to have a nice relaxing shower and or I'm going to turn my phone off for 10 minutes. I'm going to be with myself, but it is the the activity of setting a goal for yourself, you know, no matter how big or small, and then following through with that goal is what gives you dopamine. Uh, and that's why I don't like to rely on competitive video games, uh, because, you know, you're not in control 
of that dopamine feedback. And sometimes, you know, some nights you might go on a bender and you'll, you know, lose a bunch of rank points and you'll feel even worse at the end of the night because you did you not gain that dopamine release that you want to. Next is serotonin. Uh, and I'll give you guys better strategies for all this after we explain serotonin. So serotonin is responsible for regulating your body functions, such as sleep and digestion, as well as regulating your mood, which is why SSRIs are so commonly uh, prescribed to people that are dealing with depression, because you know it's just assumed that it's an issue with stabilizing uh, someone's mood because of uh, a lack of serotonin. Uh, so there are ways that you can help your serotonin, especially if you're serotonin deficient. There are ways that you can uh, improve the regulation of your bodily functions and you know your mood. And the body is it's tied to the mind. Uh, and a lot of people, uh, I think, you know, assume that you know what's going on up here is kind of different from what's going on down here. But most of your serotonin is created and produced within your gut. Uh, so things like you know having a balanced protein rich diet is going to improve your serotonin. Things like you know having a balanced sleep schedule is going to improve your serotonin and your circadian rhythms. Uh, and then also gain sunlight every day, uh, especially sunlight early in the morning is going to help you uh, be have a more balanced sleep schedule and it's going to help your body regulate its circadian rhythm. Uh, and the earlier that you can do these things in the day, the better. On the other side, uh, away from the body, ways that you can help regulate with your mind uh, is through mindfulness, you know, uh, and being able to be in the moment. Uh, it's a good way to help control and regulate your mood. Uh, because a lot, I think, uh, especially with how many just distractions we have this day, right? You know, social media, YouTube, et cetera. Uh, it, people have lost or are starting to lose the ability to be in the moment. Uh, you know, even just like listening to like podcasts on the, the way to work. Uh, and like, I, I do that all the time, right? Like uh, anytime I go to work or school, I have a podcast in my ears, which, which is fine. But uh People also need time without it. You know, people need time to be with themselves in the moment and to be able to experience their environment uh, and experience beauty around them without having to, uh, you know, supplement it through a funny video or through, you know, just like whatever the new drama is. Uh, I, it was so funny. I was cooking rice the other night. And just watching the water sift through the rice, I was just overcome by the the beauty of in the minutia of the world and the way that the world interacts with each other. But that's because I had this this moment of mindfulness and this moment of clarity. Uh, so, what I want to say about mindfulness is that the past, it's all about being within your moment, right? Uh, because the past is depression. And the future is anxiety. Uh, and we truly only live in the moment, right? There is no such thing as the past. There is no such thing as the future beyond being ideas, uh, because we only exist in the here and now. Uh, and I think reminding yourself and building the ability, whether through meditation and you know, meditation, it's it's proven to increase the production of dopamine and serotonin, things that are necessary for when you are depressed. Uh, but being able to snap your mind back into the reality that's around you, you know, whether you do that through meditation, whether you do that through like feeling, sound, smell, uh, exercises, however you build this muscle it is a muscle every all these strategies that i'm giving to you uh they improve and you improve at it the more you do it uh so being able to snap into the present um and you know if you if you do have some things to sort out from the past you know if there's some trauma uh being able to recognize when you're actually reflecting on something constructively versus when you're ruminating on something, uh, you know, and you're obsessing over it without being able to make a meaningful progress. And it's the same thing about the future, right? Like, uh, anxiety is normal. 
it, it's it's every we're supposed to be anxious about the things that we care about. You know, if we have to deliver a speech in front of a bunch of people, of course we want to get that right. You know, there there is a level of worry that is healthy for us. Uh, but when it gets past the point of worry uh, and it becomes obsession, right? And you you start losing the ability to do these serotonin serotonin enriching things such as you know get sleep uh, or you know you know find a stable mood because you're so obsessive about things that you know are yet to come and may not ever come uh, then that's when you start having an unhealthy relationship with uh, the future and I, I want to underline that it's it's okay to um, to have these stressful, you know, it's okay to have anxiety, it's okay to have cortisol, because these stress hormones that we release in our body, uh, they are the antagonistic molecules to happiness, to the happiness chemicals that we need. And that's that's the issue with like, you know, social media or cookie clicker, right? Because we were in a, a constant state of diminishing returns uh, of happiness, but these, these cortisol, these moments of stress, uh, in order to produce more happiness chemicals and to be able to actually enjoy these happiness chemicals, we need to undergo stress. Uh, we need to do hard things. So that leads me into my next tip, um, to-do lists. So when I was at the bottom of my depression, when I was at the, the worst point for myself, I don't know who I heard from or why I heard from, but you know, I'm, I'm sorry that we're all pulling from the same universal library. Uh, but it's the to-do list of doing three things. If you can finish three things a day, then you can be successful. And when I was at the bottom of my depression, those three things were taking a shower, going out on a walk, and making sure I ate something. That was it. And when I was at that the bottom of the barrel, that's all I could get myself to do. But the more I pushed through and the more I did those things, the better I became at doing them. And that's why I believe every day you need to do something that you don't want to do. You know, whether that's a homework assignment or it's a it's a work assignment that you've been playing off. And the earlier that you get done, the, the better you're going to feel for the rest of the day, right? Because you're gonna have this huge dopamine release from doing this thing that you needed to do. And then that's that's when you play video games, dog. That's that's when you fit in these these other uh, dopaminergic activities. That's where you know you you do all these things that you want to do because you got the hard stuff out of the way immediately. Uh, but whether you know versus if you do it at the end of the day, then you're going to be fighting an uphill battle, right? Because like if you if you start with doing all the things that you want to do and you get dopamine from them, then it's going to be hard to bring yourself to do the thing that you don't want to do. You know? So by depriving yourself of dopamine early in the day, uh, and doing this stressful thing, you're gonna get this huge rush of dopamine from by by finishing the hard work first. Uh, then going to the easy stuff. And then, you know, it'll be gangbusters from there. Let's see. We talked about to-do lists. We talked about mindfulness. Okay. So the, the last things I want to get into is I want to get into sunlight and exercise. Uh, and I want to get into pharmacology. Okay. So sunlight and exercise. Uh, sunlight early in the morning. Uh, thank you, Andrew, Hu Andrew Huberman, for this uh, information. But getting sunlight into the irises for 10 to 30 minutes, uh, as soon as you wake up, it is going to naturally produce cortisol levels, uh, which is the stress hormone. And remember that the stress hormone is the antagonistic molecule, molecule for the happiness hormone. So the more we fill up our stress, the more we flush it out into happiness eventually. Uh, and it also, the uh, sunlight, 10 to 30 minutes, as soon as you wake up in the morning, it helps you set your circadian rhythm. And it's the number one tip for people that have issues sleeping is to, as soon as you wake up, you know, wake up at whatever time you want to wake up, uh, and then go outside, get that sunlight into your irises, you know, don't stare at the sun or whatever, but, you know, go on a, 
a long walk or you know that's that's a good time to like go on a walk uh and listen to a podcast or be with yourself uh and then what that does is that it will start the melatonin production uh 16 hours later so you will be going to bed at the time that you want to be going to bed at by getting the sunlight in the morning uh, and so, you know, if you want to wake up at 8 a.m., start waking up at 8 a.m., get the sunlight into your irises. It's just going to balance out your circadian rhythm, uh, and it's going to help with serotonin production because you're going to be getting higher quality sleep. Uh, the next one is exercise. Uh, exercise increases the production of dopamine and serotonin. So it's just like it's an easy win, right? Because you're if you set up the goal to exercise, exercise and you achieve it yay we got dopamine and serotonin we got endorphins our brain is going to be flooded with happiness chemicals and the more you do it the better you're going to get at and the better you're going to get at scheduling it so please please exercise uh the last thing i want to talk about is the pharmacology uh so some of the supplements that i take and some of these supplements are game changers for me or they have been game changers for me uh to deal with my uh depression and that is fish oil with spe specifically fish oil with over a thousand milligrams of epas which is essential fatty acids uh they are very important for brain health uh and they are very helpful in regulating mood disorders such as depression uh so anywhere between 1000 milligrams to 2000 milligrams of epas daily uh will help with your depression creatine monohydrate is my second one uh, creatine monohydrate has been shown in helping with mood disorders, uh, as well as, you know, it helps with exercise uh, and it helps with muscle mass if you're interested in those sorts of things. Uh, and my third one is magnesium. Uh, I specifically take zinc magnesium before bed. It helps me balance my hormones, but magnesium before bed, you will be getting deeper REM sleep. Uh, and the, the better your sleep, uh, the better your mood stabilization, the better your body stabilization, the better your production of serotonin. So I hope you guys found this helpful. Those are kind of the ways that I have been able to hack my depression. And, you know, it, I've gone from intense suicidal thoughts to being a productive member of society, uh, which, you know, that doesn't matter. I've I've gone from intense suicidal thoughts to being happy, being able to wake up and be with myself. And when I do identify those moments of depression, uh, you know, being able to combat them and come out, you know, even within the day on the next side, just feeling a little bit better and having a game plan for myself on how to get out of the hole. Uh, so there, there is light. Um, take all these things, find what works for you. You know, this, this is obviously blanket, uh, advice for people but you know i hope you guys found this helpful and i'll talk to you guys later